fly with me, come fly, let's fly away. There's still a genuine sense of wonder over the long ball. You get to see the greatest players in the game watching the home run derby, putting their hands on their head, whoa! Well, I go back almost 30 years and seeing it, and I love seeing it now. Once I get you up there, where The first one I ever saw was 1986. Daryl Strawberry hit the speaker. Junior Griffey in Baltimore. That may have hit the warehouse, and they announced it did. <laughs> The show Josh Hamilton put on was beyond belief because it was Yankee Stadium, and the homers seemingly kept getting farther and farther. Oh, it's tattooed! Gone again! Of course, Robbie Cano and his dad. It's a father and a son playing baseball. Come fly. This is a show and a half! Fly. Fly, fly, fly. Good! Fly with me! Let's fly! Away. Oh, I love you, gets to be a kid again on Derby Night. That's why we love it. Welcome, everyone, to the 2014 Gillette Home Run Derby. I'm Chris Berman, and on behalf of ESPN, we welcome everybody around the United States. We welcome everybody around the world. And we welcome everybody here in Minnesota to target practice at Target Field. It's been a wait, but what the heck? Good things come to those who wait. We're lining up our players. We have 10 of the best sluggers in the majors, and they expect to put on a show for all of us tonight. So before we meet them individually, let's give a round of applause because officially, the All-Star festivities are underway. Now, let's meet the sluggers who will take to the skies over the Twin Cities tonight. We will start with the visiting, if you will, National League. First, the captain of the National League. He's tied for the NL lead with 21 home runs. Leads baseball with a 345 batting average from the Colorado Rockies, Troy Tulowitzki. Selected to his first All-Star team, he enters the Derby tonight with 19 homers. He was a Little League World Series champ. Why not a home run derby champ from the Cincinnati Reds, Todd Frazier. One of the most powerful sluggers in the game today, maybe built for this home run derby. Tied for the National League lead in homers with 21 from the Miami Marlins, Giancarlo Stanton. Only Harmon Killebrew and Kent Herbeck have hit more home runs as a Minnesota twin. He's the 2006 American League MVP, the champion of the 2008 Home Run Derby, now with the Colorado Rockies, but forever he'll be a Minnesota twin. Welcome home, Justin Morneau. One of the most electrifying players in the game today. He makes his home run derby an all-star debut. Get used to it. From the Los Angeles Dodgers, Yasiel Puig. And now on to the American League. The captain of the AL competing in his third home run derby. He's hit 11 homers in 14 games here at Target Field as a visitor. One of only 12 men ever to win back-to-back -back league home run titles from the Toronto Blue Jays, Jose Batista. He hit 18 homers last year at second base in this yard. He already has 18 this year from your Minnesota Twins, Brian Dozier.
He has hit over 30 home runs in each of the previous two seasons, has 16 homers so far this year. From the first place Baltimore Orioles, Adam Jones. Starting third baseman for the American League in the All-Star Game, already has hit 20 homers this season. His team has the best record in baseball. They have the most All-Stars from the Oakland Athletics, Josh Donaldson. He lit up the night in New York City last July. He is the reigning champion of the Home Run Derby. From again, the Oakland Athletics, Yoenis Cespedes. Ladies and gentlemen, the participants in this, the 2014 Gillette Home Run Derby. So there they are with Todd Frazier, the first batter, warming up in the cage. Some changes this year to the Derby. If you're just joining us, we're an hour late with a rain delay, so maybe you don't know all of this. We got 10 hitters this year, but set up the 10 outs, seven outs a hitter. Head to head competition after the first round. Uh, the top first round totals from each league advance to the third round. So if you're the best, you get a buy. Second and third best home run totals from each league in the first round go head to head in the second round. And a swing off, a bat off, whatever you want to call it, will be used if needed to decide advancement. So hi there, Chris Berman along with John Crock. Good things come to those who wait, as we say. And so we got some power. We got a little nine of the 10 are right handed hitters. And in talking to the guys that know this park pretty well, they say the, the little bit of the power alley is right down the line. That's where the breeze helps you the most. Although, do these guys need help? No, they, these guys need no help. When you watch them take batting practice, they were hitting balls to righties. We're hitting balls out of right field, center field, left field, of course. And Justin Morneau was, was trying to pull everything, which he has to do mm -hmm. if he's going to win this thing for a second time. I just think, uh, you know, with, with Giancarlo Stanton in this thing, Chris, hey, he has to be the odds-on favorite without question. Now, look, a great scene on the field at the moment as some of the great Minnesota Twins. There's, of course, Big Dave, Paul Molitor. These are these are not so much the Twins, but those from the Twin Cities. There's Joe Maurer, the perennial All-Star, been an MVP, and, of course, Jack Morris. So some of the great players uh, that we have seen from the Twin Cities out there throwing the first pitch. So let's take a look uh, as they celebrate a look around Target Field which is really a sight to behold. Our dimensions. And there you go down the left field where the uh, wall is only eight feet if you will. But as you notice you get around the center which is 404. And then the right center and right field we have a uh, 23 foot wall. Now the icons you see popping up on the screen after home runs will show how far from home plate the ball lands. Also on our scoreboard we'll show you the projected distance the ball might have gone if it didn't collide with an object and hopefully I mean an object like a seat or something like that. Now let's look at the Taco Bell road to the title. The bottom two hitters from each league will be eliminated after the first round. So you need Joe Lenardi here to go through the bracket but we'll do it for you. Then it's head to head competition after the first round. The end of the night one American leaguer and one national leaguer crocky will compete for the championship. So that's a change and I think good if the all star game is worth something this also at least somewhat for league bragging rights. The another thing we need to know is the seventh and final out is the Gillette Orange Flex Ball for each flex ball home run hit Gillette and Major League Baseball will combine to make a donation of ten thousand dollars. So here is your bracket. Study it. We'll have a quiz in three minutes.
So Todd Frazier, who you didn't see out on the field there, but we uh, we talked with him earlier with Buster Olney on an extended pregame, and thanks to Ravi and uh, Booney and Barry Larkin, the Hall of Famer, for keeping us on us, keeping us sight, and we're ready to go. He's your dark horse here, Todd Frazier. We gave his, you know, Little League World Series champion. Uh, he's already become a leader in the clubhouse in just his third year with the Cincinnati Reds, with his brother pitching to him. Yeah, and it's. it's this is what you're going to expect from the first round. You're going to get guys taking a lot of pitches to make sure that, you know, you see Todd right there motioning to his brother, try to get a little more inside because he knows he has to pull it to get it out of here. And remember, now, of course, for Todd, it makes no difference because this is his first home run derby, but seven outs instead of 10. So whatever roll you get on, you better do it by about the fourth out, right? Yeah, you better get on it quick because there's no time, you know, it's not like you can. Feel it out and you know miss hit a few balls and think I still have a lot of time to get through this. It, it, three outs makes a big difference. You know I wonder. And there's a slug to center field, but that uh, won't go very far. And I wonder these pitchers that were not in most cases. Well, Stanton will have his manager Redmond pitch, etc. But like his brother here pitching. Whoa. That cost uh, ESPN some uh, merchandise. Um, <laughs> I I wonder if the pitchers will be really off because oh. they're hepped up as much, right? Well, what do you think? The, the last time his brother threw batting practice in front of 40 40,000 people. I, I, yeah, he's very nervous. His brother is. He right. has to be. If he's not nervous, he's not human. I mean, if the hitters are nervous, hitting without a cage. In batting practice with all eyes on them, how do you think the pitcher is? So you just want to get off the schneid here if you're tired. Go you you want to just get something grooved, hit a homer, exhale, and get down to business. That was, that was about a 52 mile an hour changeup. Huh? Yeah, he's, he's been out in front of a couple. He got jammed on one. The ball, he, when he hit the left center field, he got jammed on. He kind of inside out of that one to left center. Now he's hooking grounders down the line. Find that group. Remember, only seven outs. We got ten batters, but we got seven outs, and the number four and five hitters in each league will be eliminated. There goes one, and out goes Frazier. And is that a rainbow on our first home run? My goodness. The pot oh. of gold. Oh, All star appearance, a Little League World Series championship, and a rainbow. Nice. Been good for him. Yeah, it has. So five outs for Todd, just one homer. And the picture that you might see here during this All Star week. And we told you that he was a member of the, the star of the 98 Toms River uh, New Jersey Little League World Series champs. They beat Japan. This one is. Slug to left field through the rainbow, and it is a rainbow. Home run. That went up into the second deck, and you know when you look at the other players in this, the size and the the strength of them. You know you don't look at Todd Frazier as a as a guy you think would have big home run power, but he has that ability to hit the ball a long way just because he's long and lean. Well, I was going to say is there's a by the way again the seventh the final out the Gillette orange flex ball for each flex ball homer hit Gillette and Major League Baseball combined to make a donation of ten thousand dollars. So about three or four weeks after a couple weeks after they won the Little League World Series the Yankees invited Tom's River team to take the field with each of the position players and there's a 12 year old Todd Frazier standing at shortstop next to a third year pro Derek G. Now they're in the all star game together. Yeah I saw the picture and it was. Uh, you know, you can tell Todd Frazier was a little bit in awe of Derek Jeter, but you know, of anyone who's ever dreamt of playing in the Little League World Series, I'm sure Derek Jeter had some admiration for Todd Frazier at a young age. Now they didn't get that, so Todd Thanks, will end with two Please home sir. runs and a big smile, a smile that'll light up the room, and one rainbow.
And now the home crowd will be revved up as their second baseman, Brian Dozier, who wears number two in honor of one of his heroes, Derek Jeter. From Fulton, Mississippi, played college ball quite well at Southern Miss. Do you think they're rooting for him? Yeah, and that, that's added pressure right there for Brian Dozier, knowing that he's playing in his home ballpark. They just saw Todd Frazier only hit two balls out. Now it's now it's up to him, and I think we have to watch early to see if he's over swinging and swinging at pitches who that aren't where he wants them early in this uh, in this round for him. Like uh, Todd Frazier, his brother, his brother too, Clay Dozier, was a collegiate pitcher and outfielder in the state of Mississippi. So similar situation for first timers. Excitement family wide. Yeah, you know, I, I know the, the first thing you do when you hear you're going to be in a home run derby is you want to try to win, but it is nice to be able to include family members in this. And I think baseball has done a great thing let, allowing this to happen. You know, normally it's, you know, I mean, when they first had it, it was just whoever threw BP for the coaching staffs were throwing BP to these guys. Now they made it more of a family thing. Now that one will find its way out of play for you. First time home run derby viewer. Any swing that does not go out of the park is an out. You take as many pitches as you like. But that's an out. As it might have been in a game. Yeah, you see the he, Dozier's a little bit over anxious. He swing it, swung at a pitch up. Now that one was more in. Patient now, which is a good thing. Rainbow is still out there over the left uh, center field seats, as you can see. Actually, looks like we're in St. Louis, doesn't it? With the arch. And a throw for the kids out there as well to chase the balls, but thus far for the home standing Dozier, nothing out. And this will get out. Well, now let's see if he can get on a roll right here. You got this first one out. He still has four outs to work with. 372 feet. Pops it. Think like breaking balls coming into you. Has an arc on it, that's for sure. But I would hope he wouldn't be throwing any breaking not. balls. His batting coach with the Twins here, Tom Bernanski, who is obviously a very good player here. That one is ripped down the line. Will it stay fair? No. One, the what proved to be the first kind of home run derby was a league competition. It was at the Metrodome in 1985, and he hit three home runs, giving the uh, American League a one home run win. This is a Second deck and gone. Kurt Suzuki from Wailuku, Maui, his teammate, all star catcher, rooting him on. Much more patient. Yeah, he's starting to get it. He's starting to get the feel for the home run derby now. I'm waiting for my pitch and my pitch only. Yeah, there's the Gillette Orange Flex Ball. We'll have enough flex to get, a, get it over the over the fence a little farther. You hope it's harder than than more more hard than flexible. Yeah, we hope so. Ball. So Brian Dozier 
with a two spot, as did Todd Frazier. We got the captains. What a great experience. The captains, Troy Tulowitzki of the Rockies, Jose Batista of the Blue Jays, coming up. MLB at Home is presented by T-Mobile, here to connect you to what matters most on America's largest 5G network. Switch to T-Mobile today. Welcome back to the Gillette Home Run Derby at Target Field in Minneapolis. A little bit of a rain delay, but we're underway now. For over 25 years, Major League Baseball's reviving baseball in inner cities, or RBI program, has given young people from underserved communities the opportunity to play baseball and softball while encouraging academic achievement and teaching important life lessons. For more information, visit MLB.com slash RBI. Now, these kids represent uh, Major League Baseball's RBI program and the Boys and Girls Club of America. They are matched with a player. The winner gets a $50,000 donation from Gillette and Major League Baseball for field refurbishment, while everybody else gets a $5,000 donation for equipment or supplies. So no matter what, there's a guaranteed $95,000 donation for RBI leagues and the Boys and Girls Clubs of America, and that's great. To be the captain of the Home Run Derby is an honor. This could be a once in a, in a lifetime thing, and it's something I'm looking forward to doing, and I'm going to have fun with it. So now the captain of the National League, and he's going to be my pick. I know that's a little off the charts, too, Crocky, but. Troy Tulowitzki, I, I know it's, look, this is the fourth highest by Elevation Stadium. It's not Coors Field, but I thought I'd throw that out there. There is a little elevation here. I got to give you my reasons, don't I? Well, no matter how high he gets, we'll be able to see with the neon gloves he's wearing. <laughs> yeah, look I know. those things. So here is Tulo, and joining us in the booth is really one of the hosts, and the honorary hosts, uh, and a perennial all-star, albeit injured this year, will be Joe Maurer. And Joe, good evening, and uh, you've done a heck of a job. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. It's uh, it's great to be a part of this, and uh, to have it here in our hometown is uh, is awesome. So it's uh, it's a great event. Well, listen, we got you behind the plate again. See, <laughs> it's just yeah. 200 feet up. <laughs> yeah, it's a little little different view for me back here, but uh, you know this is good. Well, you know guys like Troy. I mean, it, it's does he have that sort of swing, or what type of swing will it be? To get it out of here because it's not that easy a park to hit it out. To. No, it, it's a big park, but I like your pick. You know, I'd, I'd take a right-hander in this park. You know, uh, you know Dozier. I mean, he just went. You know, um, he's been hitting them, the balls to right field or left field and sneaking them out of there just like that. But um, yeah, you know, I, I think a righty is going to do well in this park, and he um, you know, looks like Tool is off to a good start too. See How the altitude, Crocky. Yeah. <laughs> it's the neon. <laughs> uh, How happy are you though for for Brian Dozier? To make the All-Star team, it, it you know look we we knew Whoa. he was a good player, didn't know he was this good. Yeah, he's he's all as advertised. You know, up here in Minnesota, we know what he's capable of doing, and you know I'm more impressed with his defense. You know, he's uh, he's a shortstop that transitioned over to second base the last couple years, and he's been doing a great job for us. But he can uh, he's got a little pop too in his swing, and uh, he's having a great first half. Is it odd looking at? Uh, baseball from first base. It is. I don't want to get used to this. I can tell you that, <laughs> or up here at least. But uh, first base been going pretty good. Um, it's different, but uh, it's a new challenge for me, and um, you know I'm enjoying it. What is it like? I mean, look, your hometown boy. You've been a Twins fan forever. You got to meet either the, your heroes or the fellows like Harmon Killebrew, who really you were too young to watch, but got to know him so well. The late Harmon. What's it like playing baseball in Minnesota that the nation does not know? Oh, it's awesome, you know, and I think uh, I'm glad that the the game is here this year, and, and people can realize what rich history that we have. You know, um, Puckets and Herbecks and Gaetti's and Molitors and Winfields. You know, come back to play and Morris. Um, you know, that was an honor for me to throw out that first pitch with those guys, and it's kind of the first time we've all been in the same place. But um, to be honest with you, I don't know what I was doing on that field with those guys, but uh, I was happy that uh, I got asked. Are the uh, Twins trying to tell you something, Joe? Like, <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> I hope. I not. mean, they move you from catcher to oh. first base. <laughs> now you're throwing out the first pitch with a bunch of retired guys. <laughs> now Tulo has gone way deep, and he's the first to have a three spot up on the board. So again, you got this is different. 
seven outs as opposed to ten. You got to get rolling. He got under this maybe a bit too much. So now comes the flex ball. Ten thousand for each home run and five thousand for every non home run. So he took this captaincy pretty seriously like he, he said he was he thought about it although he had to pick more. Than well I think it's a good pick to begin with to stay um, fair. You know uh, Morty's been a guy that's been there done that so and he said yeah. Is that a homer. Yep. Yep. I called it fair. Yep. He go. called it a fair ball. So four home runs a flex home run our first. Yeah. <laughs> Morning's the, he's the one lefty. Yeah, you know, um, he's gonna hopefully he pulls him down the line. You know, uh, it gets pretty deep out there in right center. Good job by Troy Kulowitzki to hang a four spot, and he swung out of his shoes on that last one, didn't he? You know what that's like. Let's let's look at it. All the three of us here. Too low. You know he's. A chance to rewrite a lot of stuff as one of these power hitting shorts up if he stays healthy like he is this year. Yeah, and this is what it, it, it's a rare combination of, of great defense and the unbelievable power that Ford Tulowitzki possesses from the shortstop spot. And, I mean, you look at this, remember when he first came up, he was spread out, crouched down. Jim Tracy, his former manager, said, Why don't you stand up and be 6'3 like you are? And the power numbers have increased seemingly every year. As long as he stays healthy, he's gonna he's gonna put up big numbers. Here's his gray shirt. Listen, enjoy the festivities, but get back out there. Will you? Yeah, you, you absolutely. Well? I'm a little uncomfortable up here. Hopefully, I don't have to well, go up a long time. Fault. Now, you're always <laughs> welcome with me, but he makes everybody uncomfortable. Yeah, well, I appreciate it, guys. Good to see you as always. Thanks, Joe. All right. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. Ever since I was a little boy and I used to watch the, the home run derbies on TV, I wanted to be a part of. It brings us all together as ball players uh, and it allows us to admire each other as athletes. So I uh, enjoy being a part of it. The captain of the National League, Kurt Tulowitzki, had to fight at four home runs. And now Joey Bats, Jose Batista, who went back to back years in 2010. And 2011 hit 54, then 43 home runs and to win the American League home run titles both of those years. Only the 12th to win league home run titles back to back. A list that begins with Babe Ruth. So Joe Maurer and the Minnesotans got their beautiful sky just a couple of days after the the unbelievable full moon, the super moon, right? A little closer to to the earth and normal in the orbits and we had a rainbow and we've got the Gillette home run derby so Jose Batista and it's interesting he's Joey Bats because you remember the old expression of Crucky the fellow that loved the razor so much he bought the company well he didn't buy Marucci back company but he he's on the board of directors of Marucci <laughs> Bats. so not only does he use it and like it he really believes in the product moving forward and that bat didn't quite get out of here. I think whatever bat he's using, and Marucci does make some great bats, but uh, yeah, he's, whatever he's using, he's swinging it well. It's his fifth All Star, he's leading vote getter, and it's a slug. Back, back, ball. Now this is slug. Gone. That's a line drive. Yes, sir. 367 foot line drive. Oh well, there'll be more out there. Like I said, way back and a rainbow into the bullpen. So very quickly with only one out, Jose Batista with three home runs. So he's ready to roll. He was a finalist a couple of years ago. Speaking of taking the captaincy seriously, back, 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 and gone. Buster only. We're watching a heck of a show here.
That's right, and it's something he prepares for. Guys have been doing this now for four years, and among all the players, I think Jose Batista takes this as seriously as any of them, maybe more. You could see him between rounds working on his swing, had his game face on the whole time. This is something that he really wants to do well in. Out number three, but uh, the highest number on the board is to the Witzke, four of our ten batters. So the next home run and Batista will have the most. You just need to be in the top three of the five in your league and you move forward. But if you're the top in your league you get a bye which would be beneficial to anyone. And he's that ball is on its way to Minnetonka. I'm not sure where Minnetonka is but apparently it sets up in the second deck. It is. It is in the, it is in the second deck. And by the way, this might be a neighbor of Minnetonka. North Minnetonka. Yes. Now no one's going to fight him for that ball. Seven home runs for Batista. He still has three outs to go. Again, if you're Joining us late, we're about an hour late with rain delay. Seven outs, not ten like you're used to for each of these batters. And the captain of the American League, Jose Batista of the Blue Jays, who got off to such a great start. Now they've fallen out of first with the Orioles playing so well in the AL East. You know, it's kind of like a year late, but Toronto is now the contender. And this is a contender for very north Minnetonka. Right hit off the facing of the third deck. Oh my goodness. Wow. 418. Now is that 418 where it hit? I or, don't or 418 know. where they projected it go if it didn't hit that cement out there. I'm not sure. We gotta get our saber Maddox on this. Oh boy. Jose Batista now getting you know Robbie Cano has been the captain. Hey man, take a sit, take a timeout. We got more to come. All right, so that 418 was where it hit. Projected was 475. Beautiful. Now back to action. Joey Bats. Oh, that one had hair on it. We get the distance, we get the projection, and then we get it out. And so now we have our flex ball. But he has flexed his muscles, has he not? He's put himself in a really good spot so far. And because there's so many hitters coming, you got to keep cranking. But none of these first round totals. Wow, it's way back, 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 and gone. Homer number 10. Well, was that waiting through a rain delay or what? That's impressive. With the leg kick, the timing you have to have, even in batting practice with the leg kick, and he got it early with the with his BP pitcher. That timing was perfect early and carried it over to 10 big home runs. That's what we're talking about right there. The leg kick getting down, the foot getting down, and clearing those hips early and hitting. Long ones. Oh. Yeah, that's, that's the one that we'd had to have replay if that was the regular fence. See if that would have went over. But second deck, we're okay. But you see the leg kick, the foot down, the hips explode, then the hands coming through at the end, and that's why Joey Bats is one of the uh, perennial power hitters in all of baseball. There's your rainbow, Boomer. Yep. And uh, he, he, meanwhile, while we're showing you all that, 
Now we come power from the National League. That is coming up. Giancarlo Stanton will take his swing. Then it's Adam Jones of the Orioles. Joey Bats didn't even take the last out. He no mocked it. T-Mobile and Sprint are joining forces to build America's largest and most reliable 5G network. With more towers and more engineers, you'll get the best 5G network and the best prices. Welcome to T-Mobile. Welcome back, everyone, to the Gillette Home Run Derby on ESPN. Play ESPN and Abe, Major League Baseball.com's new game, Sunday Night Showdown. And we'll tally the most total bases. Jesse Puig and Dee Gordon for Matt Adams and Matt Carpenter. It's free to play. Make your pick now at ESPN.com slash MLB Showdown for your chance to win tickets to this year's World Series. change in the batting order see don't think the managers don't think about this uh, here in the home run derby you switch the order you fool the pitchers I'm kidding yes he'll Puig of the Dodgers who's been you know he erupted on the scene literally last year in June and the Dodgers who uh, really weren't uh, doing very much went 42 and 8 after he arrived last year Crocky and everything he does is with flair that's for sure including the haircut yeah, and that first swing, it looked like a swing and bunt. <laughs> this is Robbie Cano's dad, yeah? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was throwing to him earlier. And, of course, we know Robbie Cano's dad from uh, pitching to his son who won a home run derby. And Pedro Gomez, you got more on that. Good evening, my friend. Hey, Chris. I spoke to Jose just before the derby. He told me that he had no idea he was going to pitch to Puig until this morning when they called him and said, look, Puig doesn't have anybody here. Can you do it? He only threw about five pitches to him during the rain shortened batting practice. So this is brand new for both of these guys. Well, and Puig is he's anxious for one crookie and very quickly his five outs remember he only gets seven yeah and it's it, he's swinging a lot of pitches that, that aren't really good pitches to hit in this home run derby but he's swinging at him quick hey right? he's not going to get behind in the count that's for sure no that's for sure but already uh, I mean we're got to get on a roll or he's going to roll right into tomorrow night's game that one he's just turned on but it looks like it is going to go foul I mean, it is pounded, but I mean, we heart it's like he hardly was here. That's a shame. Yeah, he was. That had to be nerves because he didn't take pitches. He took one or two pitches, but the first swing he took, he got he he check swung. Uh, who check swings in a home run derby? It tells you was there was nerves, and I don't know if he wasn't picking up the ball well off of. Jose Cano, but I mean, he was a little, little over anxious. That's kind of too bad. We're kind of okay. When is he going to get into it? But uh, at any rate, will Puig will sit very quickly. And now back to Pedro Gomez. And I'm with the executive director of the Players Association, Tony Clark. Tony, the Players Trust is something that is very near and dear to you, as well as all the Major League Ball players. Tell us a little bit about what's going on. The Players Trust is the charitable arm of the players, and there's a lot of things that we've been doing now for some time, and uh, we're excited about the direction that the organization are, uh, is going. Uh, playerstrust.org is the uh, is the website where you can see all of the great things the Players Trust is doing and all of the great uh, events that the players are a part of in advancing those charitable interests. Now, Tony, I know that there's something exciting that's going to be kicked off tomorrow in honor of former executive director Michael Weiner. What can you tell us about that program? Well, the players wanted to create something that honored Michael's life, his legacy, and the impact that he had on people. And uh, as a result, they re they put together the the Michael Weiner 
uh, a scholarship uh, for labor studies. Uh, it's an opportunity for those who are studying in the, in the labor uh, uh, area uh, to have a scholarship that allows them to further their studies going forward. So uh, the players, uh, again, wanting to make sure that there was an opportunity to, to advance Michael's interests and Michael's concerns and, and honor him and his family, uh, put that together, and we're looking forward to having our first recipients this fall. Tony, thank you very much. Thank you. Growing up, everybody watched Homer and Derby. And to do it one time in your career, you got to do it if, if you get the opportunity. It's a no-brainer. Well, Adam Jones, we met at the Homer and Derby a couple of years ago, Crecky, uh, when he delivered ribs in Kansas City to us. Yeah, Mitch's meat brought us some ribs, and Adam Jones ate them all, which was very nice of him. Now he's hoping to... Uh, to go the other way on us and, uh, and send him out rather yeah. than bring the ribs in. So. Yeah, I, you know, Boomer talking to Matt Weeders. He's. I said, how do you think he'll do in this? And he said, this is normal. This is. This will be normal batting practice for him because that's his normal BP. He said he's been doing this for years. He's been participating in home run derbies for years without actually having participating in the real one. 28 years of age, his seventh year already. And with Adam Jones, this was kind of the Orioles ahead of the curve. The Orioles were nowhere. And they signed him to a long term deal for big bucks and they're really they're doing this. They're not ready to make. He was the cornerstone of where they're going. And of course now with Buck Showalter and the team they have are in first place. Yeah and a, and a great trade by the Baltimore Orioles basically getting Adam Jones for Eric Bedard. And you know when you get a middle of the lineup gold glove center fielder to hit on your team and you can get him signed long term you can run too. And you got it. You got yourself something special. Yeah that was a special home run there. So he is on the board. Number one pick of the Mariners back in 2003 and of course now cornerstone of the first place Orioles. Four up on the Blue Jays and five of the Yankees. That'll be foul. And we don't want to take away from Adam, I want to see how he does here, but I know uh, we would be remiss. Oh, he just slugged that one, and it is gone. Man, so is somebody's hand. Yeah, that's that's scary. That's you, I don't. You, when as a ready. former player, you're not. You don't. Uh, you know, you, it's hard to fathom hitting line drives in the second deck. Well, that's a second deck rainbow. That's better. I can live with those. Those line drives I can't live with it. No one should hit a line drive that far. Uh, this is a rainmaker. Will it have enough? Not quite. When I, when I started, the, Tony uh, uh, Adam is from San Diego. So therefore, as anybody in San Diego, whether you're a baseball player or not, one of your heroes is your former teammate, the late great friend of ours, the Hall of Famer Tony Gwynn, who, who just passed away uh, very recently. Uh, tragically of cancer he touched all of us but Adam Jones was a youngster that he touched in a different way uh, had recruited Adam to play baseball for him at San Diego State where Tony of course was the coach and Adam didn't go because number one pick he got good money but they became friends anyway and Tony would invite him in the offseason to work out at the field etc which was Tony Gwynn in a nutshell wasn't it Crocky. Yeah, yeah without question and Tony had a lot of former or current major league players that would come to him for you know to, to hit for, for Tony just to watch them hit and uh, he's helped so many of these young kids and you know, I, and I know Tony took great joy in watching their progress I know he had Jimmy Rollins out there you know Jimmy won an MVP now Adam Jones is wow. you know one of the best better players if not one of the one of the best players in baseball right now as far as the total package and you know Tony is very proud of these these young men and I think it you know after he passed in the words they said on Twitter and to the local media so wherever they were playing you can tell they respected how much they respected Tony everybody in major league baseball respected Tony and our, our our hearts go out to his family he was frankly my 35 years of covering baseball and all the sports as good as it got from my angle and then work with us in the booth many times and I know you knew him as a youngster and we'll talk more about Tony later but I know Adam would would be proud that we're talking about Tony Gwynn as he's putting on a heck of a show himself uh, with four home runs many of them of the long variety. 
This one is to the track. So the way we are going, that's four for Adam Jones. Third longest in the Derby here, Krucky. Yeah, that was that line drive into the bullpen area, and then, then this one right here, the line drive into the second deck, and a great play right there by a Justin Morneau fan. But you know that when you watch him play on an everyday basis, that swing's not in much different than what he does every single day as a Baltimore Oriole. So as the high schoolers, the local high schoolers put on a show, remember the one in New York last year. Adam Jones will towel off, uh, anticipating that he is uh, on his way to our number two. And here's a man that, well, frankly, everybody is eager in anticipation to see Jim Carlos Stanton, Miami Marlins. MLB Priceless Moments, presented by MasterCard. Gives the ball to the kid. How awesome is that? Jimenez in the air. And there's one happy fan. That's why we love this great game and the great players in it. The moment. That's amazing. That is amazing. There big hug. <laughs> a big Josh Bell fan. I wish you a long and happy life together. Like Trout, as usual, signing autographs for some young fans and the reaction priceless. Welcome back to Target Field and the Derby. You know, this summer, get together for a priceless cause to help fight cancer. Spend $10 or more with your MasterCard when you dine out, and MasterCard will donate up to $4 million, one precious cent at a time. Visit priceless.com slash causes to learn more. Hey, Pedro. <laughs> Eric, what are you doing at the Derby? Well, I'm just going to watch some home runs. I didn't, why are you up here during the Derby? Hey, guess what? I got some food for us, and I used my MasterCard, <laughs> so I just donated a stand-up to cancer. Outstanding. Yeah, but shouldn't you be down on the field during the derby? I mean, I thought you covered. Pedro? Pedro? Pedro! Member of the media turning down a free meal? You kidding? That's great, though. That's a wonderful, wonderful by MasterCard. Yes. That's, that's what we need to say. And we also need to say that, well, we've been waiting to see him. Giancarlo. Cruz Michael Stanton. 24 years young in his fifth year for the Miami Marlins, and he is built for the home run derby. Yikes. Good start. Yep. And it's a wonderful story. His uh, his manager is is pitching for him here. Mike Redmond of the Marlins, and you can you can you know a manager could use a few days off especially but uh, Mike who caught five years here in Minnesota loved it and his family said that would be great and Carla wanted him to pitch and uh, how about that the manager pitching to the star of the team in the home run derby and Redman who pitches batting practice every day sees this did that go yes. gonna need a ruling uh, see that yeah here. I go into, go? He's going into flowers to get that one. <laughs> yeah, it did. A flower pot. I tell you, I was watching John Carlo taking batting practice off of Redmond and sitting a lot of balls up into the cage. Wasn't getting getting the bat out in front and trying to hook the ball. Like he just did there. He hit out in front of that one too much, hit it off the end of the bat. Started to get a little worried about my pick when I saw that. Mm -hmm. Well, he, look, he's he's got to get not be number four or five in each league. And he's at two home runs, and that one will go way back. Oh, Third game, <laughs> and it's a good time to say maybe this went toward Bemidji because Bemidji, as local legend would say, is Paul Bunyan and Babe in the, the Babe the Blue Ox territory. And hence, here he is in the home run derby. I'll take your word for it. Yeah, he, you, 
you knew that he hit that one as soon as he hit it he he stood back and watched it. He took a couple steps out of the batter's box to watch that one. Projected at 465. Oh, this is way back to center field. Back, 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 back. Oh, my goodness. Ooh, that's look at that. <laughs> that's, that's second deck dead center. Look, I know this is the home run derby, but if you bought a ticket there, you really didn't expect the ball, did you? No, you didn't expect that one either back behind home plate, but no, I they probably just think, oh, well, at least we got a good view. We can see where the pitches are. Little did they know that Giancarlo would reward them. Buster Olney on uh, on manager to batter. Mike Redman told me that Stanton is actually not a great batting practice home run hitter. He said that what he likes to do in batting practice typically is work the middle of the field and if he tries to pull it then he'll hook the ball on the ground and tend to roll over on it. But when he works to the middle of the field like you guys saw right there that's when he's doing things exactly right. Like that. Good job, Buster. You're on it as usual. That thing, that thing looked like it was going to hit the L screen in front of my, in front of Mike Redman. I thought it did. <laughs> oh my goodness. And he's into the second round now, right? Oh yeah. Five homers. He's leading. Yes, he is. But he'd like to maybe get a bye. The best total in each league gets a bye into the third round. No rules this year. He's only 24. He doesn't need a rest. I know. They're getting younger and stronger, bigger and faster, aren't they? Yep. All right. This is the flex ball. Patience hits. I mean, you notice where he's standing. He's farther off the plate than any one of the hitters. So, oh, oh, boy. oh boy. farther off the plate. Oh, this is two thirds of the way up in the upper deck. Wow. <laughs> Projected five at ten. That'll work. Good. Good night. He's getting a standing ovation from the players. Yeah, he, he, believe me, he didn't think he would get one either sitting up there. You better, you know, <laughs> crank up for this highlight. Oh, man. Hey, that was the orange flex ball, too. I mean, that, that's, uh, we got $10,000 worth of that one. Look at that thing. Just, I mean, it took took off the bat, and it got about halfway into left center field and was just rising. Look at this boy. Wow. Cutchin who's hit a few but maybe not like that last year's MVP and off. Yeah. Look at this strength. Good. Ugh. That's what you're up against now pitchers. Yep. And he's 24. Yeah he's still learning.
And now a real intriguing player on a real intriguing team. Josh Donaldson, the starting third baseman of the American League from the team with the best record, a 621 percentage, 59 and 36, the Oakland Athletics. And his hashtag is bringer of rain. So we'll see if he, we, we already had that tonight. And Chipper Jones, the bringer of rain says, bring it on. Chipper ought to know. Certainly a future Hall of Famer there. And so Donaldson just trying to get into it. Born in Pensacola, but really grew up across the line there in Alabama. Played at Auburn. First round pick of the Cubs. 2007 bounced around a lot of places. And his chance at Oakland. Well, we mentioned Jose Batista being a leg kick guy, and so is Josh Donaldson. Sometimes if the timing's not right, it can it can get get ugly. Now his batting practice pitcher, uh, his uh, right here is this kid out? Not quite. He's not his major league manager. It's a bullpen coach of the A's, Darren Bush, who was his manager in the A's system at each of the first three levels on the way up. So that's a nice story. Great story. You know, those guys in the minor leagues work tirelessly for no. No, they get no publicity for it. The, the minor league coaches are a big reason why most of these guys are here. He's really a catcher. And here's a bringer of rain. Is it a bringer of gone? Yeah. Then. Uh, Scott Sizemore got hurt and he said to manager Bob Melvin and the A's, I, you want me to go over there? And yeah, I guess so. And he went over there and then a little later in he got hurt and it's been his job. He came up as a catcher. Moved to yep. third base and very athletic third baseman at that. I'm sure with his bat, the way he could produce runs offensively. I'm glad bet they're glad to have him out from behind home plate, yep. risk an injury. Put him at third where it's a little safer. A little. Of course, not in the home run derby, it wouldn't be. Would it? No. No. <laughs> Neither would dead center in the second deck against That's, Stanton. That should be another contest they have. They put put a third baseman shortstop there and throw to these guys and see how many plays they can cool. come up with. That, that would, wouldn't get that many entries. At least on no, the one end. You wouldn't get any. He's got to get moving here. He just one home run and down to the last out. He moved on that one to left center field. Back it goes. Back, back. A deuce. And flex home run. Can he get another one? As the American League board. And Bautista has 10. Adam Jones with four. Those you're here from the Twins too. Well, and Donaldson with three. Flex home runs. It may be enough to move him forward. We'll have to see. He got a little patient on the last couple of at bats. Yeah, he had to start to get a little more into it there. Got a little over anxious early and had some patience there later, Boomer. Well, these A's have all sorts of haircuts too, like yeah. the A's we grew up with in the 70s. Yeah, they're they're a unique group. Speaking of A's, last year's champ will be coming up. Yoenis Cespedes from the A's. We'll be back. You wouldn't accept an incomplete job from anyone else. Why accept it from your allergy pills? Flonase Sensivist. Nothing stronger. Nothing gentler. Nothing lasts longer. Flonase Sensivist. 24-hour non-drowsy allergy relief.
Welcome back to Target Field in Minneapolis. Little delay with rain, but we are underway. Major League Baseball's All-Star coverage continues tomorrow. Three on the MLB Network, MLB All-Star Red Carpet Show presented by Chevrolet. 7.30 on Fox, the 2014 MLB All-Star Game, the Mid-Summer Classic, third to be played here in Minnesota in the Twin Cities, the third in each in different stadiums. 1965, they played at the old Met. 1980, and then we had one at the Homer Dome in '85, and now here at Target Field. He got a hero's welcome earlier. He's back in town where he was one of the most prolific Minnesota Twins. Justin Morneau, the one-time MVP of the American League and one-time winner of this home run derby. Justin Morneau back in town after almost all his career minus a month last year his trade to Pittsburgh and now playing for Colorado the only lefty of the 10 in the field the walls a lot higher but you don't have to tell him that he knows how to get it out of here. Yeah, that's the uh, that's Joe Maurer told us when he was up here visiting us in the booth that it's definitely an advantage to be a right hander but. That's where he has to hit it, according to Joe Murray. He has to try to hit it down the line. Four time an All Star. Not an All Star this year, but a captain's pick by his Colorado teammate, Troy Tulowitzki, which was awesome. And this crowd, if this gets out, which it won't, just want to shower him with thank you. Married a local girl. He and Joe Maurer were in each other's wedding. I mean it goes on a young man from New Westminster British Columbia so kind of I know it's a long way from Minnesota but it kind of both understood each other and this is a Minnesota blast. Hey, that one hit the flag up there and dropped straight down. The flag is still there. It's still there for the moment. Justin Morneau needs three to advance. And he's running out of outs in front of his one time home foot. Yeah, that's just a. Uh, Getting out front, pulling off the yep. ball, trying to hit it down that line and catching it off the end of the bat and rolling it over. Top three advance, the top one in each league gets a Dozier, his teammate last year, and Glenn Perkins, another all star. Attaboy. Killebrew had 475 home runs as a Minnesota twin. Ken Herbeck had 293. Justin Morneau is a twin, 221, third all time. There are the retired numbers, including number three, Rick Killer. And Morneau just sent this one way up and gone. The money ball too. Yeah. Donations being made today. That's we like it. And not quite. And so Morneau shouldn't get too cold because 
He's tied with Tom Frazier. They're going to have a swing off to the third spot. We still have last year's defending champ. When he's Cespedes will hit first, and then we'll have a swing off between the first batter. So he's a chance, unfortunately, not be loose. Todd Frazier and Justin Morneau. And this is coming up. Three swings each. Okay, swings. And then alternating swings but did he have some swings last year Cespedes John he was impressive and you know for a young kid to come in and and do what he did with the flair that he did at the last home run the big flip of the bat and the arms extended pretty pretty special I'm not sure if I'm Bob Melvin though I'd like to have two of my Studs in the middle of my lineup go participating in the home run derby, but we're sure glad they are. No, Melvin said yeah. he had a great quote. He said, I wish he would be Rocky Marciano, retire undefeated as the champ. But he didn't. So Bob and the A's are watching. Of course, six A's are here, plus some Marjorie, who is now an A, but his name is a National League pitcher. And he's with the Cubs for the trade, the huge trade this past week. Nguyenis Cespedes. Infected from Cuba after 2010. His mom Estella was uh, a pitcher in the Cuban softball 2000 Olympics. And he lit up City Field last year. This won't quite get it. The bat this has done it with the bat. Crucky, you remember, and this one is down the line. Oh, off the foul screen. So home run number one for the champ. Back to back games against the Angels. Mike Sosha, the English manager, said, You gotta just tip your head. He made throws from left field after juggles or misplays. Nailing a runner at home, nailing a runner at third, and he's seen enough. Yeah, well, you make mistakes in the field, you got to make up for it somehow. You either hit a homer or make a follow it up with a good play. 11 assists. So those were two eye openers in back to back games against the Angels. Yeah, I think this uh, seven outs as opposed to 10, some of these guys are a little over anxious. Yeah. You're seeing a lot of swing where balls are being popped up the other way. Foul pops, which are rare during batting practice. Yep, Cespedes. I mean, he was patient enough last year. He's got the same pitcher that he had, the third base coach of the A's, a longtime second baseman of the Mike Lego Gallego. Former teammate of mine in winter ball, Mike Gallego, in Mexico. Yeah, good guy, good. great guy, great. great human being. And wow, <laughs> wow! You, you know, you're watching the kids out there on the field, and they all run back to the fence like it's going to stay in. And then you see the kids in the in the bullpen out there, and they're looking like you know they're gathered around trying to catch it, and it goes in the second deck. Getting bad reads out there. Yeah, well. Of course, I'm sure most of those kids have never seen one hit in the second deck before. No. From from the playing field. Not often. <laughs> We've got a good story for Little League. You can hit it that far. Now this is uh, the other way. Ooh. Five outs, just two homers. Well, he needs one more to yes. tie Donaldson. He does. He's clinched a swing off because Dozier at two. That's the lowest total in the American League. And now we're down to the flex ball. Yeah, three. 
needs one more. I like seeing him in this home run derby. Jose Abreu. Yeah, well, wow. He'll be one time. Oh. Yeah, he better make himself comfortable in this All Star game, too. He'll get plenty of opportunities in that. I've never seen anything like it. Here you go. See, so again, on my mistake, Gozier and Cespedes with two. You need three to at least still have a chance. This is got to get out. Got to get out. Getting ready for the National League swing off down below. Yeah. Could have two Oakland A's in an American League swing off. Cespedes gets this one out, but he doesn't. So we <laughs> so two swing off. We've got a rain delay. We've got extra rounds this year, and now we'll have two swing offs. So the National League, you see Chuck Torres with Major League, League Baseball. Off. We do the American League swing off, all right? You sit tight. What? Three swings. Okay. So the National League swing off between Todd Frazier and Justin Morneau. Three swings each. And then we see where we are. Then we're down to alternate swings. And then we go to penalty kicks. Penalty kicks, yeah. Who's going to be the goalie? That guy in the upper deck uh, <laughs> standing here. <laughs> so here's Todd Frazier. Started things off. Personable third baseman of the Cincinnati Reds. And his brother Charlie trying to lay a couple in there. Each swing obviously is so valuable. And I bet when he walked off after the, being the first batter in this home run derby, probably thought I'm done. Right. He didn't think two would be enough. Inside out, and we lost a few fielders here. They <laughs> think they went for a water break. Yeah, they take it. Why didn't think he'd hit one to right field? Well, that's two swings. Nothing doing yet for Todd. That'll make this count. Charlie Frazier trying to lay it in there. And he did. Frazier sends it back, 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 and out goes Frazier. So there's one. And now here's the hometown hero. Morneau has a little bit of an advantage here having just swung not long ago. Frazier had to sit a long time. Of course, they can go back in the cage and loosen up. Man, not the same. Of the 10, the only lefty in this competition. Three swings. If two go out, he moves on. Ball's just a little bit on the outer half of the plate. Morneau wants a little more in. Sent middle in and up. That way you don't have to worry about trying to elevate it. Uh-oh. Now he like Frazier, the first two did not go anywhere.
This has to go. Now he will not be playing tomorrow night, so this is a farewell to their hero. As Frazier advances. You know, Justin Morneau, when he was traded late last year, took out a full page ad in the Minneapolis Star Tribune and the St. Paul Pioneer Press. It, it, beautiful, we could read it all, but he'd like to say thank you to all the Twins fans. Thank you to the Twins organization. I was drafted by the Twins in 99. I've been very proud and fortunate to call myself a Minnesota Twin. It went on and on and on. I was a wide eyed 22 year old kid when I came here, and thank you for your support. Your friend, Justin Morneau, is how he signed it. Very, very classy. And he was welcomed home warmly here. Without question, a classy man. So now the Oakland A's swing off, if you will. Josh Donaldson. You know, he's Cespedes. You see Donaldson getting over anxious, hitting two pop ups, one foul, one in the infield. Time Donaldson's ever rooted against Cespedes. Right. You imagine him taking batting practice last group. How many times they've had their own oh. little home run contest? I would imagine every day. Yeah. That one was projected at 484. Year's champ. Oh. Oh, tied that yeah, one up. I it. think so. <laughs> Yikes. He's used to that 10 out thing. He needs 10 out. Seven didn't work for it. Well, that'll do it. Cespedes is moving on as he bests his teammate. Josh Donaldson. No cheap ones either. Every, them balls were. I mean, Donaldson had to feel like after the first one, this is probably not my night. about it boomer he's not getting cheated look at him two teammates good luck hope you win it let's win this division yep <laughs> he wore his championship belt Ballard, into the ring and he didn't want to sit down did he <laughs> two of them projected at 483 and 484 all right wow <laughs> while they celebrate here's the way it works so numbers four and number five in each league are eliminated the top home run hitters jose batista american league giancarlo stanton nationally get to rest and now you have a National League number two number three with Troy Tulowitzki against Todd Frazier well you're right after his two homers right away he figured I'm not going yep. but he's playing and Bautista and Stanton get the buys and what we didn't finish was Cespedes and Adam Jones will go next in the American League Now, mano y mano from here on out. We'll be back to Target Field. MLB at Home is presented by T-Mobile. Here to connect you to what matters most on America's largest 5G network. Switch to T-Mobile today. We bring you Home Run Derby. This week, we have two of the greatest stars in all of baseball, Mickey Mantle and Willie Mays. Good luck. Good luck, Mickey. High fly ball, it may be fair, it may be fall way down the left field line. It is gone. Hit that pretty good. Yes, he did hit that one pretty good, Mickey. Well, Mickey's coming up with a chance to pick up the marbles. 
the tension mounts. High fly ball deep to left field. This may be it. It's way back there, and it is gone. And Mickey Mantle wins it, 9 to 8. Mickey Mantle against Willie Mays. Mark <laughs> Scott, the original home run derby shows, they were great. Mono e Mono, 1960, those were the old, well, not the old, that's in Chicago, but Wrigley Field in L.A., the original home of the Los Angeles Angels. And uh, so just like the TV show in 1960, we now go head to head for everything else. And the guy's designing new haircuts, right? They're Stand unique. Between. They're, they're very unique, yes. All right, so Todd Frazier, the first man up, thought, as you said, he wouldn't have another shot. But he is the number three hitter with two home runs and one in a swing off. And he will go against the number two hitter, Roy Tulowitzki, the captain of the National League, for the right to face Giancarlo Stanton in the National League Finals. Almost. Tulowitzki, very serious about this down below. Billy doesn't have to tell him how many he needs. Again, he gets seven outs. And not called base of the wall. The, two of them have just missed. Again, dead center field, does it have enough? up the nine iron. He had a little spin on that one, didn't he? Yeah. That's probably a good golfer. Center, really. Well, he's a great athlete, as we know. Little League World Series champ, pass, punt, and kick. All that is a pre-teenager in Tom Herbert, New Jersey. Tom Frazier of the Reds has one home run here in this second round. More patient. So if he keeps moving, he'll have. Seems like all of a sudden he hit. We never heard from him for two hours. He'll be up almost every two minutes. Yeah, the forgotten man. Right. This is a long way to right center field. Oh man, he's just missing. He's, he's coming up short, but you. There's no way in a home run derby you could expect to hit two in the first round and move on. Hard to get a chance to move on, and he got the chance. And I'm sure he was thinking to himself, "This this is probably over." Right. I think he's going to get a little. From his teammate, his name today, Simon, multi-game winner already for the Reds. Meanwhile, Tulowitzki's coming out saying, "Just tell me how many I need." None of the totals count from before. Everything is new. That would be fun to see a home run derby in Wrigley. Players would have to go out to right center field and left center field to get to the batting cage. <laughs> <laughs> now this one is uh, way up there by Frazier and it's gone. So he's putting on a late spurt. That's his second home run. He's got two outs to play with still. Frazier come. Oh, that one is slugged way back, 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 and gone. Now he's starting to figure it out. Yeah, he's figured it out. It's back, 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 and gone again. His brother's getting those pitches in the middle in and up just a little bit, belt tied a little higher. Like I said, if the pitcher elevates it for you, it takes a lot of, a lot of the, some of the work out of you. Still have to hit it, of course, but I think you'd rather see it a little higher than you would a little lower. And that's a long way out there. Does it have enough mustard? You betcha. That's impressive. Yeah. Four in a row. Mike Trout with the grin. 
you were Mike Trout, wouldn't you be grinning all the time? Yes, you <laughs> would. Yes, you would. He's a great kid. He really, really is. Great kid from outside of Philadelphia. Yeah. Grew up a Philly fan, but a Jeter fan. Mm -hmm. There's everybody on the, the All Stars team that they are. So he, you can count him as being a little confused. Can't like both, can you? Why not? Different well, leagues. Guess. Different leagues. Yeah. Back then there was no interleague when he was a kid. Well, he's still a kid. What am I saying? He is a kid. <laughs> Be a kid for about five more years. Yeah, he hasn't reached his peak yet. He hasn't reached his oh, prime. Just... Still trying to figure this league out. And Frazier is certainly figuring this one out. It is way up there and gone. Well, he is putting on an impressive show in this round. And it gets under that one. So really good job and a good job late clutch hitting if you will here in a home run derby by Todd Frazier with six most of them with just two outs left there's Red's teammates are all the Chapman Simon the pitcher Cueto seeing their position player do something they like that's impressive enough hit one to center but the one he hit the right center up in the up in the up in the seat was impressive maybe the most impressive home run I've seen tonight well 500 feet from Stanton might do that but the top Frazier like you said boomer a late push to get to those six home runs and putting a lot of pressure on Troy Tulowitzki yes, now Captain late it <laughs> was a nickname and I'm going way back now it's basketball I followed it then James Silas the ABA running mate with George Gervin in the back San Antonio Spurs of the ABA red white and blue ball and he hit the he hit it he hit it like they were basketballs out there now Tulowitzki's going so I picked Frazier why <laughs> right. well I mean the goal is for your league to win yeah, it is so now Troy knows he needs six to force a swing off or he'll has a sit down as a captain ever won. I mean Cano won but then the next year he was the captain. Yes. You had captains that I don't think so. I don't think so either. Now they. Wow. That is way up there and gone for Kulawitzki. That's a shortstop. No. Hey, what he's rapid fire. He here. is. He. I was just saying that he just that ball just landed and the next just, one was out. It just landed and the next one he hit foul. That was an inside that may not stay fair. That's let's get the call. No. Was inside and he just <laughs> pulled it. Although it was, it's almost inside the rest of Yeah. Uh, uh oh, too low. Quickly has to get on a roll. He's got three outs to go and he needs five home runs. Two outs to go. He needs five home runs. And you show you we're, we're showing the what Todd Frazier did late in the round, showing patience. Troy Tulowitzki hasn't showed any of that in this round. The pride of Long Beach State, seventh player overall picked in 2005. Had Jeter posters, and Nomar Garcia Para posters, Nayrod posters. Wanted to be one of those big shortstops. He certainly has done that. Now he needs a big charge, and there's a start. Speaking of big shorts up his dog is named Ripken so he's got everything covered. He? <laughs> he got under this a little much and so it'll be Todd Frazier moving on to the National League Finals and not the captain Troy Tulowitzki but a good effort. So the third round we now know in the National League the finals if you will. Giancarlo Stanton and Todd Frazier. 
who will go to the American League Finals to face Jose Batista? Will it be Adam Jones? Will it be last year's champ, Yoenis Cespedes? American League semi, if you will. Coming up next here at Target Field in the Twin Cities on what's become a beautiful evening. T-Mobile and Sprint are joining forces to build America's largest and most reliable 5G network. With more towers and more engineers, you'll get the best 5G network and the best prices. Welcome to T-Mobile. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, tonight we stand united in the fight against cancer with our partner, Stand Up to Cancer. Please join Commissioner Selig, Major League Baseball, MasterCard, ESPN and the entire baseball family in standing up to cancer. And please go to standuptocancer.org to find out how you can help today. This summer, get together for a priceless cause to help fight cancer. Spend $10 or more with your MasterCard. When you dine out, MasterCard will donate up to $4 million, one precious cent at a time. Visit priceless.com slash causes to learn more. Fans here standing up to cancer as our home run derby coverage continues. We'll get back to Chris Berman and John Cruck momentarily as you see the stands. And now, folks, we'll sit back down as we move towards round two. And the American League side, now that we know that Todd Frazier will be in the finals against Giancarlo Stanton, good luck with that. Barry Larkin and Aaron Boone, Frazier's put up some fight, but he's, this is like going against Ali in his prime with the way Stanton had that first round. Well, you talked about Giancarlo Stanton and his power, how he makes the ballpark look small. I happen to agree with you on that. He hit some absolute monster shots. But think about the first two home runs he hit, he missed. Yeah. But unlike everyone else in this derby, his sneak over the fence, the other guys are those yeah. are the ones that die 10 feet shallow. That's the difference between Stanton and everyone else. And because we are both are Cincinnati Reds, Todd Frazier represents. Keep going, buddy. Keep I know going. you like that. Well, Alfredo Simon getting a lot of airtime as he's air celebrating time. there with Aroldis Chapman. And now Yoenis Cespedes steps in. And uh, like Frazier, probably didn't think he'd be around for this second round, but here he is again. And he had come in in a real homerless drought. Well, that was the same situation last year when he won the Derby. But you notice in round two, or the swing off round, where he had two out of the three pitches out. This guy puts it together when he needs to. And, and, and it's about getting hot. As we saw with Todd Frazier, he looked like he was down. Bam, five, six in a row. All of a sudden, it happens in a hurry. There's a big one for Cespedes. And uh, one of the barometers for a team success, two out hits. And in the case of a home run derby, it's six outs. Yes. How do you do with six outs? Or in the case of Frazier in that swing off, he delivered when he had two. With Barry and Aaron, I'm Carl at Cespedes. We send it back to Chris and John. All right, fellas, thank you. We're enjoying what we think will be a big barrage late. Remember, Batista didn't even need all his outs to have the most homers with the 10 spot. So he sits by and watch who will he face? Cespedes of Oakland or Adam Jones of the Orioles? And Cespedes sends this back, back, and second deck. Seems to be routine, hitting it up in that second deck for these guys. Again, Mike Gallego is throwing to him, longtime major leaguer and third base coach of the A's. Looks like the outfielders have a shift on. 
Yeah. <laughs> 20 and left and four and right. Yeah. <laughs> Only one to the right or right center. <laughs> He can run forever if he hits it down the line, huh? Yeah, he'll be a sabermetrician when it's all said and done. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter where you position on this one. This is low pen bound. Nice. <laughs> Look at them all come back with their heads down. Darn it. A <laughs> hundred kids out there in one baseball. 99 of them are upset. Cespedes gets under this one. Now my now eight of them call mine. That's always tough. Yeah. And 40, 50, 40 plus thousand people cheering. You know they can't hear each no. other. Then it's just a matter of height. Yeah, the tallest one gets most of them. And so Cespedes. Get on his roll. Yeah, that would be rolling on a river. Maybe the Mississippi River. Four homers, four outs. Remember, you get seven if you're just tuning in. We're down to the American League semifinals. Here's a stat that I'm not sure what it means. Is that home runs total? I don't really know what this means, so you can sabermatic this one. We've 20,000 actual home runs. So feet. 20,000 actual feet tonight in home runs. Okay, I don't. You can handle. Now I can tell it's late in the evening. I'm getting handed that stuff. There's. Yeah, well, there's 21,000 feet. 20,400 more feet. Feet don't fail me now. Even Marty, Marty Aronoff punchy up here. I can tell when he's hitting me these pieces of paper. <laughs> that was a jump. Oh, he crunches this one way up there. This assessment is. And it has enough juice to get out of there. Right over the railing, right near the flower pots, and into the first row. So Cespedes all of a sudden with six home runs. This is the kind of role he, we saw last year at City Field, Crocky. Yeah, he get he has a he has he hits the ball high. He, like see a lot of like John Carlos Stanton. Line drive, Todd Frazier line drives. Oh. Cespedes hits those majestic he does. high home runs. Here. Look at this one. Wow. Mankato bound. I need a map of Minnesota. Yeah, well. Adam Jones going, <laughs> okay, man. I better dig in. He said he's going to make it tough. I see. All right, so we're down to the flex ball now. With seven home runs. Cespedes trying to put a number up there that Adam Jones will find hard to match and move on against Joey Bats in the AL final. More at bats here for Cespedes. For those majestic ones. Yeah. Oh, a line shot. So. The actual and the projected distance. You never know. This is to center field toward the Shaking mascots way up and bounces back into the field to play with a home run. Eight for Cespedes. So he had to survive a swing off, if you will, number nine, I should say, 
a swing off against his teammate Donaldson and he is don't look back uh, he hit that one and walked off like he didn't get it yeah he was walking back toward the, the American League bench over here That's a heck of a job with nine homers oh, yeah. after barely surviving the swing off and now Adam Jones I'd say he's got his work cut out for him. John. Oh, this is what Adam Jones had to sit and watch Chris is some ma a majestic high home runs and seemed like as he got a little later in the in this round got a little tired decided decided to start hitting some line drives out of here. That's very impressive. I, I, just can't fathom hitting the ball like that. Maybe a punch three iron. Yeah. Well. Yikes. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> the, speed, the speed of that getting out. I mean, you just look at the power, though, the lower legs, how strong they are, how he gets that ball out in front, able to keep it fair, which is a, a key in this home run derby. We've seen so many balls. Hit foul. He kept that one fair and hit it a long way. So Adam Jones is hoping that Jet Ruiz, the batting practice pitcher and bullpen catcher of the Orioles, can groove a few so Adam can do the same. Fourth time an all star, three time a gold glover. The first place Baltimore Orioles, and he says, okay, gauntlet down, ball out. Yeah, back at you. This ain't over yet. Just in Baltimore last night for the Sunday night game, and I heard. Yeah, well, it was fun. The Jet Ruiz uh, said he had to get a haircut for this event. Said he wanted to look good on TV. He's looking good. He gets in the finals, he'll get a lot of air time. Yeah, he will. Oh, Christ! Does it stay? That's what I mean. Cespedes just, just, kept those balls, kept that ball fair. Adam Jones just got out a little bit too far in front of it. Still hit it 450 feet. But. Oh, this is great. Oh, it's an upper deck job to White Bear. Cleaning his shoes. Gotta look good. Yeah, yeah, you can't have dirty shoes in a home run derby. No, not if you're. I, that's that's a fascinating thing with the All Star Game, the creativity with some of the spikes the guys wear. They are. How about this shot by Adam Jones? And back, 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 back on. That's just a two backer. He only had time for two. Two back and a breath. <laughs> they just won the pennant. Yeah, right. Like a, had to win a bet or something. He had to. He had to. <laughs> Look at that. Smile could light up a room. But it's about. 
what this all star experience is all about. Up, back our way. Now, Carlos Stanton. Keep and loose for the National League Finals, which is next. He had the most in the end out with six. You get a feeling he's only just started. You know, Adam gets under this one a little bit. And now we'll need a major roll. He's going to hit six out before he gets his seventh out. There's his catcher, Matt Wieters. He's got to be going crazy having to sit and watch. Yep. Very happy. Talked to him earlier. He's very happy at teams in first place, but he said he wishes he was out there helping them. You know it's an odd feeling, isn't it? Yeah. It stinks, to be honest with yeah. you. It's, plus, it's more nerve wracking sitting and watch knowing that you can't control anything that goes on. You know, when you're playing, you have a chance to contribute and help. Cheated on a couple of fouls, but Adam Jones once Cespedes has hung up the nine. That was a lot to ask. So Cespedes will advance in the American League Finals against Jose Batista of the Blue Jays. Defending champ against this year's captain and Frazier, who is kind of he's kind of crept in there. He's He's the sleeper. That's why he's the sleeper. You picked him as the sleeper. Dad Frazier, Giancarlo Stanton. National League Finals on tap here in the Twin Cities. You wouldn't accept an incomplete job from anyone else. Why accept it from your allergy pills? Flonase Sensivist. Nothing stronger. Nothing gentler. Nothing lasts longer. Flonase Sensivist. 24-hour non-drowsy allergy relief. Well, we've crowned a champion of the high school home run derby. Finalist Josh Naylor of Mississauga, which is uh, across the border in Ontario, Canada, hit four. But Luke and Baker of Conroe, Texas, had seven home runs, some which got the best in baseball's attention. And he took the title here at Target Field. Congratulations. Grown big in Texas. So here is our bracket. We're into the league finals. First up will be the National League where Todd Frazier is is there he is. He is the survivor. Here he is. First one up at two homers, figured he was done. It enabled him for a swing off, which he bested just a more note, one nothing. But then he took down Troy Tulowitzki in the semis. And now Giancarlo Stanton with the most National League home runs with six. He'll face him. He had the bye. So Frazier the three seed if you will against Stanton the one seed. So in a lot of ways this is his fourth at bat of the night right. Yeah and he's done he's three for three already. Yep. Herb Street Gruden for him, right? Big Reds fan. And Carlos Stanton, that's uh, doesn't look good. That's a big, big hammy to quad and hammy and get them all going. Pulled my hammy just watching him. <laughs> Meanwhile, Frazier tries to, you know, 
goes straight away a lot, doesn't he? Well, that pitch was away on him, and he got a little impatient and thought he could hit one out the center. Kind of caught it off the end of the bat. Now there's Ty. That's going to go way up there in deck number two. So he's on the board. They love their long ball here, and they love their hitting in Minnesota. That's for sure. Think of Twins baseball. They came here in 1961 with a star from the Washington Senators, and they moved here by the name of Harmon Killebrew. Harmon came up here and hit more homers in the 60s than anybody else. Includes Willie Mays and includes Hank Aaron. So they've loved him. And here's number three. And then retired number 29 is Rod Carew. I mean, one of the great hitters we have ever seen. Seven batting titles, 328. We can go on and on as Frazier pops this one up. The other numbers, maybe we could take a quick look while we're making a tour. Along with Killebrew three and Carew 29. As Frazier. Has two outs to go. And this may be one out to go. The other numbers retired here. Tony Oliva, number six. Ken Herbeck, 14. Of course, the late, great, beloved Kirby Puckett, 34. Burt B. Holm, Bly Levin, 28. And the longtime skipper, Tom Kelly, 10. And of course, the 42 of Jackie Robinson. Every day. What's up, buddy? Well, he may very well have run out of gas. Yeah, very well could have. Yeah, that long wait from the first hitter to getting into the swing off and then getting into that third round against Troy Tulowitzki. Yeah, he could have been a little little fatigued there. Well, you saw a wonderful scene here earlier and your opportunity to join the ESPN family Wednesday in our efforts to help defeat cancer. Maybe one day we won't have to have this discussion. That would be wonderful. If you'd like to make a donation, you can visit ESPN.com or call 1-800-4-JIMMY-V. First round for the top home run hitter of the National League, Giancarlo Stanton. Here's where they went. Here's where they went. 400, 430. 430 was a joke. 422, it seemed that seemed longer than that. That's where they went. Now yeah, where they would have gone, who yeah, knows? That's, that's where it's that's where it stopped. Right. That's <laughs> someone someone told me that. I forget which player said that he might hit one out of this place. Well it's long. That's long. And it's, it's kind cool. of the one they still and talk it's about. Cool too, so the ball's not going to carry as good. Well, he is from Panorama, California, so that would be the proper name. Will he have a panoramic home run? Six six two forty two. Second round draft pick Marlins, two thousand seven. Here you go. Well, they have those screens even in the middle of the way field, out there. Right? Just needs two, and he can sit. Yeah, it's going to take a, a miracle for Todd Frazier to advance on this one, I would think. But but he's he got three and three pop or one line driving two pop up so it's, maybe it's destiny. Stanton has sat there for a while. Hundred home runs he had in the in the eighth fewest games ever to get to hundred home runs. Four hundred. That's a rainmaker. Which we had earlier tonight, and we don't need. No, not anymore. Ryan Howard, by the way, 325 is the 
fastest. But wow. Stanton, the eighth fastest. So you know, <laughs> Todd Frazier. I mean, he's 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 walking on a thin line here. But well, oh, they're tied. Now we are tied. It is. Whoa! Oh, did we are oh. not tied. Todd Frazier. We're not tied. <laughs> I thought he was going. He went over and came back. So Run what's the over. call? Todd thought it was out. It was not. Now, no. Again, when he hit two homers in the very first at bat, you figure Todd, take Todd. a shower, right? This is. Crowd trying to help the big guy. Out of his final out. Got to go out. Certainly. He won't get shut out, will he? No. He will. He did. So this is unbelievable. <laughs> Todd Frazier with one homer in the finals of the National League. We'll have a fifth at bat. Not quite like Frazier upsetting Ali in the garden. But holy smokes, he's gonna be, he's tired. Well, I think he just got a little burst of energy there. He, he, they sitting there thinking, I'm, I'm in the finals. Who would have thought? So he almost was eliminated in the, before we even got started in a swing off. When he hit one to advance. He hit one home run to it, two in the first round to advance. And then one in a swing one off, in so this one. three. And one, one in this one. One in the swing off and one in this one. Holy goodness. It's not how the ball gets in the hole, right? It's, it's, they only it's have to win by right one. That's right. Wow. Jose Batista, who was awesome a long time ago. When he's Cespedes, who has hit some rainmakers all night in the AL Finals coming up. You wouldn't accept an incomplete job from anyone else. Why accept it from your allergy pills? Flonase Sensivist. Nothing stronger. Nothing gentler. Nothing lasts longer. Flonase Sensivist. 24-hour non-drowsy allergy relief. We would be remiss if we didn't remember a couple of Hall of Fame hitters who we lost here in 2014. Ralph Kiner. Uh, 369 home runs in a 10-year career. One of just a handful of players to hit 50 home runs more than once. And Tony Gwynn, one of my favorite images of Tony Gwynn is scoring the winning run in Pittsburgh in 94 in the All-Star Game. He's jumping around like a little kid. And lifetime 338 hitter, Tony Gwynn, of all players, every player who played at all after World War II, only Ted Williams had a higher batting average uh, than Tony Gwynn, and you know, we talked about him earlier. Uh, Crocky, you knew him as a youngster. I'm fortunate enough to know everybody. There were two players, and one is a fellow who was a Minnesota twin here, Kirby Puckett. There were two players that got applauded everywhere they went in every field, every stadium, every time they were announced. Tony Gwynn, Kirby Puckett. Yeah, they did it the right way. They they played the game with uh, you know a lot of lot of class, and they they carried themselves with a lot of class. And I know, you know, I've known Tony since. Uh, you know, we were 20 years old, breaking in the Padres minor league system together as roommates in in rookie ball, and he he was the same person then as he was, uh, you know, till the day he day he passed away. He was he loved baseball, he loved teaching baseball, he loved talking baseball, he loved being around the game. Um, you know, he was just a, a wonderful human being. We missed them both, Ralph Kiner. Longtime Met fans kind of forget that uh, with all his announcing that he was a great player and a Hall of Fame player. But now we're out of the American League Finals where Luis Cespedes, the defending champ, is trying to take down his captain, Jose Batista. <laughs> and 
he, he said it. That's where he was going when we saw him go up in the clubhouse, yep. get his phone so he can tweet. You know, one of the note we shot Tony in the '94 All Star Game when there was no World Series that year, so that was the only, yeah. uh, you know, remembrance that we have of a big game. The manager of the National League squad, your manager, mm -hmm. Philadelphia Jim Fergosi, pretty close to Hall of Fame talent. That's for sure. We lost him as well this year, and we miss him. Yeah, that was a tough one. Um, yeah, it's, it's been a good year, but you know, he was a. Uh, Better person than a manager, and he was a great manager. Taught us all a lot about not only about the game, but about life. Meanwhile, sense, but it's almost to get the field crooking. He's taking dead aim here. It's like kind of stalking his prey a little bit. I, I, I honestly think he's getting loose. Uh, you know, when you saw what happened to Giancarlo Stanton, you wonder if. That could be a carryover to Jose Batista. They haven't hit in so long. You know, you get a pass in the first round, you, you get a buy in after the first round, and you know, you can loosen up all you want, and that's all great, but he hasn't hit a ball in a while. Yeah. A big fly. Gone. this was homer number three in the AL final. Pedro Gomez, he's stalking. <laughs> Chris, I just talked to Josh Donaldson, who has been Cespedes' teammate for the last two and a half seasons. And he said, you know what? There's something about Yoenis when everybody's watching that he loves to turn it on, whether it be the home run derby, like that laser into the left field seats or during the postseason in October or down the stretch run. A lot of people, Donaldson said, shy away from the big pressure. But when it comes to Cespedes, he loves for people to see how good he is. Guys? Well, Pedro, good comment, and we're seeing it. We saw it in New York, which is a pretty darn big stage. And, you know, and Oakland's been in the postseason here a couple of years. Yeah, he challenged Puig, said, hey, with him, hey. Man, I don't think so. And at least for one year, that's certainly the case. Cespedes sends it way back to right center field, back, back, gone. Wow. Look like they popped that one off the end of the bat. Well, he looks like he wants to keep the crown. He does. He wore it into the ring, right? He's trying to go home with it, too. <laughs> Having fun. Guys that have stayed. Oh. Does it have enough? Oh. Almost put a hole in the wall. Oh, man. Yeah, it, it's, it's only a 340 foot line drive. He, he can do better than that. My goodness. A different game, Boomer. Yep. I mean, you're not up there to sacrifice anymore? I don't think so. No, I don't, I've got a feeling Bob Mel is not going to lay the old bunt on Yoannis anytime soon. Dead center field and way up there on the grass. Thank you. So he's gone to right center center. And he should be getting tired. Huh. No. Nope. The youth of a, the youth of baseball. Yep. So six homers and much like. He did against Adam Jones with the nine. And not to say that Batista who hit ten and didn't even use all his outs can't do it but. He's trying to put up a total to put a lot of pressure on every swing that's. It's almost like the sleeper hold that he did on Adam Jones. And mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, that second deck's getting wore out it by is. these guys. It's unreal. He's 
he's watching. Okay, so that's seven, huh? Yeah. <laughs> oh, and he has four more outs to go. That goes. We got to check his bat. Yeah. That was a Ray Guy punt. Yeah, they're having fun. Country mate is putting on a show. Did that get out or to hit the? Uh, it hit the it wall. Hit the wall. Oh, that's where the wall extends, yeah. right there, at 403. Five feet to our left, looking at that yep. wall right there, that'd have been a homer. Two outs left. He got seven home runs. Pretty good number. Quite here, so now he'll be down to his last now. Look out, guys! <laughs> oh man! All right, so well, he is doing some toweling. Batista is alone in his thoughts and his swings. Money ball. Yep. Patient. He's just he's he's up there stalking. I'm telling you. Oh. Well, seven homers, doable but tough because. And some congrats. Because remember, he too had to survive a swing off. We'll look at some replays first. That's one right there. They in on the plate, and he just torqued those hips and hit that one out. And then second deck again, taking that beating we've been talking about. Look at that he look out! At. No, he got on top of that. That one he did. That's the one to uh, right center field. It looks like he's looking to right center. Yep. There's his chart. And so, if you're wondering, boy, when, you know, Jose Batista, what's he been doing? Well, <laughs> he hasn't swung in an hour or faced a, a pitch at the plate in an hour 54. An hour 54. It's a heck of a rain delay. Yes. Which we had tonight. And so now Joey Bats trying to get loose and duplicate the best performance we've seen at any round thus far. That was 10. He had an out to spare. Here's where he hit him. A lot of second tier shots. Saw some fans. You see fans everywhere here at the All Star game. So father and son, Toronto hats. But they were from Saskatoon in Saskatchewan. But they say Toronto's our team. We're rooting for Joey Bats, and they're here tonight. And he's got to hit seven. Going to be tough. What do you think, Crocky? Can he do it after this long a delay, almost two hours? I think it's going to be tough. I mean, you know, you saw how stiff the swing of John Carlos Stanton looked after waiting not as long as Jose Bautista. But I don't put anything past him. Jesus Figueroa, the Blue Jays batting practice pitcher. Throwing to number 19. Santo Domingo, the Dominican Republic. 
Another guy that didn't blossom till almost 30 years old. Oh, didn't quite get enough. It, it just right. He sit. Got underneath it just a little bit. Looked yep. like it got in on him a, a hair too. He didn't quite catch that one off the barrel. Credits both his manager at the time with Toronto on this one. We'll put him on the board. Cito Gaston and the batting coach Dwayne Murphy said, "You don't swing early enough. Start swinging almost before the ball is released." Yeah, and it seems ridiculous, but try it, and it worked. That's the way Murphy had an opportunity to play with him in Philadelphia. Great, what a great guy, great teammate. Swung as hard as anybody I've ever seen swing. Wow. Mm. Well, we're going to have to get the termites out of the bat rack. Well, this one has some oomph to it. It's a second deck job. Eight. To place the set for this home run derby. Yeah, and that's where he's hit all of his. Like I said, that's where he hit all of his. Game on. Yeah, he's, he's not going to go down without a fight. Ah, got oh. under that one. So Kenny hit four homers before he gets two outs. Todd Frazier, the National League champ, <laughs> won a lot of 15-round TKOs, didn't yeah, he? he? He had some split decisions in there, yeah. Yeah. He went to the judges' scorecard a couple times with him. Before one outs there, Cespedes <laughs> is watching. Wave to us. Seems nervous about the whole thing, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, oh yeah. You go through with those defectors in Cuba had to go through. I don't think this is too no, nerve wracking. That won't have enough height, will it? Nope. And so, the captain of the American League has been. Eliminated Jose Batista put up a fight. When he's Cespedes has a chance to do what only only Junior Griffey has done and win back to back derbies. And he will go up against Todd Frazier as the heavy favorite. No question. Yeah. I, I, I'm going to go out on a limb right here boom and say that that uh, Todd Frazier needs to hit more than one this round to win. Well I would think so. <laughs> Here's our final, Cespedes and Frazier. The 2014 Gillette Home Run Derby, brought to you by Gillette Fusion Pro Glide with flex ball technology, available of course at Target. And in part by Leinen Kugel's Summer Shandy. Join us out here. And the all new 2014 Chevy Silverado. We are on to the finals. MLB at Home is presented by T Mobile, here to connect you to what matters most on America's largest 5G network. Switch to T Mobile today. Once I get you up there, 
where the air is rarefied. We'll just glide, starry eyes. Come fly with me, come fly with me, come fly with me, let's fly away. Welcome back, everybody, to the finals now of the Gillette Home Run Derby on ESPN. We hope you've enjoyed it. A rain delay, but uh, we have almost like Davy and Goliath here in the finals. Major League Baseball's All Star coverage tomorrow. MLB Network, 3 o'clock, the MLB All Star Red Carpet Show, presented by Chevrolet. Then 7 30 on Fox, the MLB All Star game. And two fellows who they work hard. They work hard, Crocky. They really do. The Mike and Mike. Mike Golick, Mike Greenberg, uh, entertaining folks in the stadium. Of course, they're up early to do radio and be doing it tomorrow. They uh, have a day night doubleheader in the truest <laughs> sense of the word. They do a great job on so many platforms. They work their tails off. So, Joe Torrey, one of six gentlemen to go in the Hall of Fame in a couple of weeks, which will be an awesome scene in the 75th anniversary of Cooperstown. Flip the coin. Todd Frazier won. He got the choice. He will hit second. So the American League champ and defending champ. Yoenny Cespedes of the Oakland A's, the left fielder, against the third baseman, Todd Frazier, for the Cincinnati Reds, the National League champ. Seven outs each. And you're getting ready while well, Cespedes hopes to put up a number. Which he did both times is like too much for Adam Jones and too much for Jose Batista. Yeah, the longer this has gone on, the better he's gotten. Well, yeah, he, I don't think he's cooling off anytime soon. Pretty good start. I mean, if you like 450 foot home, yeah, it's a good start. That's into your wheelhouse. That one has to make it four sixty. Cespedes has hit three in the first round. Had to go to a swing off, so he had two, that's five. Then at nine in the semis, seven. Total of 21, then two more here, 23 home runs. Todd Frazier in three rounds in a swing off, 10 home runs. So it really is Davy and Goliath. He's on. Don't tell me that that ball was so high that it started to rain again. Yeah, that's what he did. That's how high he hit it, Crook. <laughs> I mean, you know, say coach him. The knife of him. These guys are going to be in more All-Star games. They they can finish this next year. <laughs> yeah, that one didn't quite make it. So three outs. Buster only. Hey guys, I talked to Todd Frazier uh, about the choice that he made to allow Cespedes to go first, and he said, you know what? Maybe he's tired. He just hit. So that was Todd's thinking and doing that, and he said, on top of that, he said, I haven't got a chance at second yet. Maybe it'll work for me better. That one got into the rain clouds and back, back and gone. I like his thinking. Yeah, no, I think he's I mean, great. Sesame doesn't seem to be playing along, but it was good thinking. Yeah, Todd's had to sweat every one of them out, right? Yeah, he had to set watch. He's had to set watch to see if he advances. However, maybe that's what was working for him. Is this is Upper Decker! This one. I'll put up a nice number, see if he can get there. And that's what he's done the whole time. Yeah, it's been impressive by this young man. 
Back, 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 back. Man. Man, oh man, is this a show. A lot of his Oakland teammates right there. He's got three outs to play with still and with five home runs. In the rain. We began in the rain. We're going to end in the rain. Todd Frazier's hit six in one round. Yep. Of course, that's, that's, we're, we're assuming that Cespedes won't hit another one. Guy goes slip there. Yeah. He slipped off Gallego. <laughs> he did. Mike's a cancer survivor also. Yep. Oh man! This is all the way to hitting the home of Bob Dylan. Who authored Rainy Day Women number 12 and 35. Had a chance to throw it in. Cespedes with six homers. It's up on the Iron Range if you're keeping score. Oh, so is this. He's just the Iron Man up there. Wow. Projected at 509. Are you kidding me? Just a routine pop up. I think Todd Frazier was looking at that board thinking, uh oh, maybe I should have went first. That almost made it to the Oakland Coliseum. The heck with Hibbing. Get under that. I don't think it would make any difference. Not like he was going to cool off. Yeah. I can't say that that's a bad move. I, yeah, no, I, I agree 100% with, with, uh, with Frazier's decision. You're running into a uh, buzz guy that has a knack for, seems like, of putting up big numbers in the home run derby. He came in here with a purpose, and that purpose was to win it. Prince Fielder won a couple of these home run derbies. Junior Griffey won a total of three. <laughs> and Lenny Cespedes is on his way to a, a two spot in unbelievable fashion. Put up the best round in the last round right. of the day. Guy go there stretching out a little bit. He's probably getting wore out all the pitches yep. he's had to throw. He never steps out, does he? The two ways Gallego gets looked at after these two years. You're the guy that perfectly placed him, or man, you give up a lot of gold. Yeah. <laughs> all right, now the A's. With Scott Casmir, Derek Norris, the catcher, Brandon Moss, Sean Doolittle. There's Josh Donaldson. Winnie Cespedes, six guys on the A's. 
Samarju just came over. All, all most All Stars, best record in baseball, and this, this show again from Uenis Cespedes. He's hit a total of 30 home runs tonight. I don't think he's done. No. Make some more donations to the fountain. Nope, no, nope. got under that one. It's a matter of only 30. Pretty weak, isn't it? Well, here he comes. Great ovation, boy. These fans appreciate it like they did in New York last year. Well, and you see how Mike Guy goes throwing consistent speed. Yeah, it varies location wise, but it's the speed of his ball has been consistent. Let Sesame's time it, no matter if it's in, out, up, down. But I mean, just they got on a roll these last couple rounds. You understand now why he's the defending champion. Great shot, fellas. Wow. <laughs> just 452. No, it's just 452. He gets out in an absolute hurry. He is. All sorts of looks from those Oakland A's and they're looking they're looking at their left field they're going man we do see this in BP. Oh yeah. Maybe not quite like this. T-Mobile and Sprint are joining forces to build America's largest and most reliable 5G network. With more towers and more engineers you'll get the best 5G network and the best prices. Welcome to T-Mobile. Can he hit that? Well, he needs nine. <laughs> he needs nine to tire. Right, right, I know. <laughs> but that would be him, wouldn't it? Yeah, well. Todd Frazier become a leader. And former manager Dusty Baker. When he was a rookie, says something different about this, this young man. Veterans love him, even though he's a rookie. He, he kind of acts like a rookie and a veteran at the same time in the locker room. I just like what he gives us. And now he has a regular position at third base Frazier. He's got a tall task here. As you said junior. Wow, wait a minute. Todd Frazier. Not quite. That's the longest, the deepest part of the park. Yeah, he has to, I think he has to hit three or four home runs before he gets the three outs. The six longest home runs tonight. Five have been by Cespedes. Griffey did it as we said three times, putting back to back in '98, in Colorado, and '99 in Boston. Can Cespedes do it? Frazier's got to hit hot in a hurry. Like he can keep going, doesn't it? All right, Pedro Gomez. Quite a show. Chris, in talking to Victor Martinez and Fernando Rodney, they believe that Frazier made a mistake by electing to go second because Cespedes had been so hot that he would have been better off having Cespedes sit and maybe cool off rather than getting right back in there with the hot swing. That's just the opinion of Victor Martinez and Fernando Rodney. Guys, I don't think it would have made a difference. No, I don't think so. Todd Frazier wasn't going to change his approach. You have to remember, Todd Frazier hasn't hit a lot of home runs. No. Well, the Cespedes is at 30. And Frazier is at what? 10. 10. I mean, he, he, he needs 10 now to win and with two outs left. Well, there we go. He needs nine. 
Good job, Todd. As Joaquin Andujar once said, you can sum up baseball in one word. You never know. But we're starting to know. There's two outs left. I think that one that went in the upper deck had a pretty good exclamation point on who was winning this one. Yeah. For the second straight year, Ioannis Cespedes of the Oakland A's has won the Gillette Home Run Derby. Belt didn't travel very far, did it? From his living room, maybe to the dining room. Uh, from his waist to his locker, back to his waist, yeah. really. Ronnie Cespedes defeats Todd Frazier, and it was, you know, he he was in a, a swing off for the third spot. He, he was that close to being eliminated, but just once he got in the semifinals of the American League, it was a show and a half, Rocky. It really was, and, and, and you know, with with Jose Batista hitting 10 in the first round a very disappointment big disappointment for the NL players not one NL guy really got off and hit a bunch right. of home runs you know Batista hit 10 in the first round then he had to wait almost two hours before he hit again Cespedes kept getting hotter and hotter and you can see the momentum building in his favor and you know Todd Frazier you want to say it's lucky got into the finals Berman but Chris or, but uh, you know he, he had to have some luck on his side to get in the finals and then suspended said you know what I'll handle this from here on out. Well he handled it from the second round right on out. I mean the show that he it was similar to the, to the arcs of the balls that he put on the city field last year. This is uh, this is a guy that needless to say when Oakland comes to town and they're going to take batting practices get out there early. Just yeah get it's, out there. It, it's impressive and, and you know Josh Donaldson too could be an impressive BP hitter. I would yep. uh, you know and you know the great thing is as you see them being represented by six players and when you're the best team in the league I think you should have the most all stars in the in the all star game and you know two of them got represented here for Oakland in this home run derby one of them walks out the winner again when he's Cespedes I mean only Griffey which is pretty big name in this sport yeah <laughs> back to back in the home run derby and so he's um, it was a show and the fans had stayed you know we had an hour rain delay but in the end it was kind of nice to see an AL versus an NL. I, yeah, I liked it. I, I liked the format. I, it seemed to move, you know, because you had something to root. I like that the the head to head competition. It's not, you know, if I hit more than this guy who's in eighth place or whatever. You know, it was more head to head. I like the head to head thing, but yeah, this guy's he might win some more. I, it, he's still young enough and strong enough and good enough to make All Star teams and kind of keep coming back here. I mean, he said, look, I'm defending this. There's no discussion. And did he defend it ever here at Target Field in Minnesota? Pedro Gomez on the field. And thank you. I am joined by Executive Vice President of Business Operations for Major League Baseball, Tim Brosnan, Sonia Fife, Executive Vice President for Gillette North America, and she is here to give a special presentation. Thank you. As a result of the 11 Gillette Flexball home runs, very pleased that tonight 
will be in conjunction with Major League Baseball and Gillette will present this check for 465000 to Boys and Girls Club of America and the RBI. Thank you, Sonia. And now to present the 2014 Gillette Home Run Derby Trophy is baseball's, Major League Baseball's Chief Operating Officer, Rob Manfred. Thank you, Pedro. On behalf of Commissioner Seelig and everyone at Major League Baseball, I'd like to present this trophy to Ioannis Cespedes, the winner of the 2014 Home Run Derby, and our first back-to-back -back winner since 98-99. Ioannis? Que no se te caiga. Ioannis. Last year you won. How much did you want to win consecutive years? El año pasado ganaste, ganas otra vez. ¿Cuánto querías ganar dos años consecutivos? Bueno, me enteré hace poco que hace muchos años que en Griffin Junior fue el que ganó dos años consecutivos. Creo que defender hoy el, el trofeo iba a ser algo muy grande para mí. En el primer round cuando di solamente tres honrones, que logré pasar a la segunda ronda, creo que ahí tuve un respiro y dije, esta es mi oportunidad y voy a ganar el trofeo. I just discovered recently that Ken Griffey Jr. was the only other person to win consecutive titles and it was something that I wanted to accomplish and I was able to get past the first round which allowed me to kind of breathe and regather myself and that allowed me to go on and win this title one more time. It seems like when the lights are their brightest, you seem to shine more, whether it be in October in the playoffs or now two years in a row in the Home Run Derby. What is it about the bright lights that you like so much? Parece que cada vez que las luces están más brillante, tú te destacas más. Si es la postemporada durante octubre o ahora aquí con el Home Run Derby, ¿Qué es todo lo que te gusta tanto de las luces? Bueno, de las luces y también el, el público. Creo que soy una persona que sé controlarme muy bien y cuando lo necesito y hay bastante bulla, creo que eso me motiva a dar lo mejor de mí y creo que es cuando mejor el resultado tengo. I think that when the lights are their brightest, I know that the public is watching more than ever and it truly motivates me and it, wants, it makes me want to do my best at all times. Ioannis, felicidades, congratulations. Chris, let's go back to you. All right, Pedro, great job all the way around, and obviously, Cespedes, what he, he put up here in two years in a row was, was really amazing. It really, a, really a fun night. I mean, the crowd was anxious. They waited. They welcomed back Justin Morneau. Uh, he tried. Uh, Cespedes, like uh, we just heard, you know, got going a little bit late. We raised a lot of money for charity this evening. A lot of them, a lot of stand-up for cancer as well. And our colleague and, and folks we know that uh, very good friends. And this is only scratching the surface. We didn't have a chance to show ours, although the problem is every one of us could fill in 20, yeah, 25 names. Question. So um, we hope you've enjoyed it. I, I got to, we got to thank the crew here too because we were set up on the field and then we worked up here and <laughs> we didn't know if we would have it and talk about a tar you know, crew with the tarp out. So thanks to our hardworking crew and, and you know what? The long ball is still the king. It's just so much fun to watch. It is still fun to watch. It's still fun to watch how far these, these young men can hit it and it's only going to get better. Hey, these guys are unbelievable and congratulations to you on assessments for the back to back home run derby champion unbelievable feat today like he said slow start once he got on a roll boom there's no doubt he's the best in this business well we had a lot of fun and we're only cranking it up for the all-star game tomorrow night Hall of Fame in a couple of weeks will be awesome with the six going in the Cespedes wins it coming up next the Taco Bell all-star legend celebrity softball game for Pedro and Buster and John Cruck I'm Chris Berman. Thanks for watching. So long from Target Field. <laughs>